Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see current affairs of 15th December 2023. So we are going to see the PDF of the Hindu and I am taking Delhi edition here. We are going to point out which are the articles important from our examination point of view. So after picking out of articles, we are going to see like in how many perspectives we can see that topic. Like how many perspectives we can interlink that topic. Okay. So that interlinking of topic is very important from UPSC point of view. Because you have to write answer in a multi-dimensional manner. And whenever you are writing essay, you have to ensure that you are writing at least minimum like 13 to 15 dimensions. So interlinking of these topics will help you to think in multi-dimensional way. And so that you can get more perspectives okay so that we are going to teach in this news analysis of Rathod's ideas so if you are watching this news analysis please do consistently watch and not only watching please do share this video to your friends also so this is our sincere request okay and please let me know your comments like whether you are developing this interlinking of subjects or not whether you are improving your thought process or not so if yes, please comment and if no also please comment okay so we are also going to accept the negative things as well so if you're giving the negative things yes we can uh, improve on that so the first topic in the front page of the hindu is terror charges involved in security breach case so yesterday we discussed that so people they jumped okay especially people they got passed from one famous mp i don't want to reveal the name okay mp from political party i don't want to even reveal the political party name as well and after getting this visitor pass so these people they used canisters and that released yellow color smoke in the parliament in lok sabha so that is a security breach and even uh, december 13th which marked anniversary of 2001 parliamentary attacks so here Yesterday class I said that so here this will come under unlawful activities. So these people who are involved in that security breach. So they will be booking the case under unlawful activities prevention act. So yesterday itself I gave you the information the same thing which appeared in the today's newspaper. So it says that a day after major security breach in the Lok Sabha Delhi police invoked sections of unlawful activities prevention act. So this UAPA, it is anti-terror law against four accused persons. And even there was a charge under sections of IPC related to criminal conspiracy, trespass, provoking a riot and obstructing a public servant in the discharge of the functions. So these people, they booked under two important things. The first one is Unlawful Activities Prevention Act and next one is under IPC. Okay, so here, here you have to see like what are the rules of Lok Sabha is saying. That is very important. So from that point of view also you can get a question. And next topic is 14 opposition MPs suspended from house amid face off. So here you have to see why this opposition members has been suspended from the house. So these two articles are imported from your polity. Okay, so this article is purely based on polity. Oh, we cannot connect with the other subjects. But here this security breach can be connected with the topic of even internal security. Okay, even internal security like terrorism and UAPA. So all this comes from internal security issues. And even you can see like how it is going to impact functioning of democracy. Okay, so these are the two important things that you have to see from front page. So here you can see one good image. I like it more. That is Shikaras talked on the banks of frozen Don Lake. So now we have winter season and especially in this region there is a very low temperature. So because of this the frozen of this Dal Lake happened. So if you have time, you can see some facts regarding this Dal Lake. 
and here what are the points that you have to focus or like so whether it is a fresh water lake or saline water lake and you can see the map location of this dal lake and you can see the significance of this dal lake so how it is contributing to tourism for example okay so these are some important things you have to see and even you can see one more dimension like whether it is a natural lake or artificial lake so these are the some important topics from our front page so in this delhi that is a city page i found nothing much important so you can simply move on and you can directly move on to the states page okay so this is a state page yes if you're talking about suicides so in which group of people we can see lot of suicides for example farmers and second one is women so recently there is one data says that so women suicides are increasing day by day okay because of domestic violence because of sexual abuse etc so here this article which is talking about maharashtra and please uh, text me your name and your uh, from which state you are from okay because we are going to have attendance right so don't forget this so here this article says that in 10 months 2366 farmers ended life in maharashtra so actually around 2400 people they lost their life they committed suicide between january and october this month so here you have to see what are the reasons for this farmer suicides and how many of you watch the jawan movie so in jawan movie the first scenario it is regarding the farmer suicide so if you have uh, watched that kind of movies like uh, which are depicting the problems of farmers then you can understand in reality what is happening in the life of farmers so if you understand the problems of farmers so in diff in every stage of farming they are facing problem like seeding so whenever they want to go for starting of farmer they have to make the land land okay so they have to make the land which is suitable for agriculture that means they have to do something they like they can use rotators to make the land in level and they have to pick up the stones etc and after that they have to bring inputs for example they have to need a good hybrid variety of seeds fertilizers and after that they have to go for uh, transplanting or seedlings but at that time they need lot of labor so labor will be work for money and next one is during a uh, farming what happens so after sowing after transplantation so because of this climate change sometimes it will leads to the loss of entire crop for example you can see untimely rainfall you can see uh, like uh, no rainfall and drought so that will affect the crops and actually because of this el nino this year i can say like in our village so people they went for sowing of this uh, tur dal but not even a single crop is there for this tur dal because of untimely rainfall so everyone's crop is like barren land now so there is no crop of this tur dal okay so near our village so there is one dal for this tur dal it got recently ji attack that is uh, tandur uh, okay tandur dal so in that area also there is lot of effect that is seen on this dal crop okay so that is pulses crop so here at every stage farmer is facing some problem so after whenever he went for harvest so at that and after this harvest that is post harvest time also farmer will be place say facing some problem like untimely rainfall so the get, getting this fruit grains wet okay sometimes they will also get like germination of the seeds and even if they are going to the market so there is again commission middleman apmc market so there is no proper uh, price which is given to the farmers all these are the problems are faced by the farmers okay so they have to do hard work for at least so if you see for the rice crop it will be around 4 months and for if, uh, for this uh, groundnut crop it will be around 3 to 4 months and for sugarcane it is around 1 year so 
so they will be doing the work every day but whatever the price you are getting it is not satisfied and here uh, farmers they will be going for the finance uh, companies and they will be getting some finance for buying of tractors or some equipment and even the uh, farmers they can't pay the interest and finally they are going for committing of suicides and especially these farmers you are not getting institutional credit it is also one problem so because of lack of institutional credit they are going for money lenders and they are borrowing money for the high interest rate and they are entering into the debt trap right so here please let me know uh, if you are from a farmer family or not so if you are from a farmer family so what are the problems faced by a farmer because you will be seeing okay so practically so that you will be knowing much more points than me okay <clears throat> and if you move on in our editorial page today so entirely articles are based on cop 28 already we discussed those important points in our class so here you can see one interesting article so if you are preparing for other computer examinations you can get this type of questions that is india's fastest solar electric boat launcher so you can see this boat how pretty is this in blue color can you see the image yes it is blue in color so barracuda set to be india's first solar electric boat okay so this is very very important so it has been launched in which state that is in kerala so please let me know how many of you are from kerala so how many of you are going to visit this boat please let me know especially to so here uh, title says india's fastest solar electric boat launched so here why we need this solar electric boat so if you are using the traditional uh, fuels like diesel especially that is used in the boats that will cause a lot of carbon dioxide emissions and because of this carbon dioxide emissions that is leading to global warming and now here recently in 2023 that is cop 28 it said that we have to phase out using of fossil fuels so because of this yes we need to move towards this electric or solar boats that will be helpful to reduce emissions okay so here we came up with one development so it is a first step that i can say okay so taking ahead the cause of eco friendly maritime transportation barakura said india's fastest solar electric boat was launched okay it was launched in alafusa so this is very very important and even whenever you are writing answer regarding transition from non renewable energy towards renewable energy so you can add this example like recently we came up with this fastest solar electric boat in kerala and if you move on you can directly go to this editorial page there is no need of reading spotlight and as well as metro plus yes in this cop in this editorial so many articles are based on this cop 28 so in yesterday's uh, news analysis also we discussed about this cop 28 what are the six important discussions which are done in this cop 28 so that is more than enough and here this article says about promoting of justice and equity so we are going to see this topic okay so this article it is about india's voting okay so india recently voted for resolution of this uh, issue between israel and palestine in united nation general assembly resolution so india is voted again in the favor of this resolution union ga so that topic we discussed in yesterday's article yesterday's uh, analysis so we are not going to see this again and its opinion page there is an article like is india doing enough to tackle climate change or not so here you have to focus on especially what are the steps taken by the government to control this climate change so that is very very important okay yeah here you can see one interesting image that is plastic waste floats in the sea 
near Lawson's Bay Beach in Vishakhapatna. With rain water directly entering the sea at many areas, so this has become the common sight in the beaches after city saw heavy rainfall triggered by cyclone Mekong and plastic pollution is pressing concern in Bay of Bengal. So not only in Bay of Bengal, in many ocean seas, so we are facing this problem of plastic pollution. So I want to say something interesting here. For example, this, let us take this box as a country and for example, let us see this is the river which is flowing. So whenever river is flowing, it will be flowing with a very high velocity and it will be having the capacity to bring sediments. So what happened nowadays directly we are living. So in the, in the country we will be having cities and cities they are opening their drainage into this river directly without proper treatment. So which if there is no proper treatment of this sewage or drainage and whenever they are releasing this drainage into the river, so they will be carrying this plastic waste and they will be draining into the sea. Especially whenever there is a floods or whenever there is a uh, cyclones etc. So what are the plastic that is there in the sea that will be coming to the towards towards the coast because of the waste they have the ability to bring back this waste. So some amount of the waste that will be bring back to the coast but you know that in oceans in oceans the water will be moving continuously. That movement of water is called as oceanic currents. So in this oceanic currents we have two types. So first one it is based on the depth we have surface oceanic currents and deep oceanic currents. And this surface oceanic currents they will contribute just 10 percentage and deep oceanic currents contributes 90 percentage. And based on the temperature, we have cold water currents and we have warm water currents. So actually the movement of this uh, uh, water will be there in a particular direction. So that what happened? So in center, there will be the gyre. In center of ocean, we will be having gyre. Like North Atlantic gyre, South Atlantic gyre, North Pacific gyre, South Pacific gyre, like that. So in that gyre, so this plastic is going and that is accumulating. So because of this in Indian Ocean also we are having lot of plastic waste that accumulated and for example we have Great Pacific So we have Great Pacific Garbage Patch So it is a large area where this plastic got accumulated Okay, so this is about this topic. And if you see in the text and context, there is one article that is, Is Russia winning the Ukraine war? Okay, so I can say this is an end. This is going to be an end. This is not actually end, but this is going to be an end between Russia and Ukraine war soon. So why because so till now here Ukraine which got uh, support from the western countries, European countries and after getting the aid from technologically, from financially it started fighting against this Russia. But here now European countries you are not willing to help this Ukraine. Okay that is seen indirectly because of actions of these countries. So because of this the question is whether it is going to be the end or not. So we have to see this topic it is very important. And here you can see the map here. I want to show you the map. So this part is Ukraine and this is Russia and almost this entire region it is under control of Russia now. Okay, so we have Kherson, we have Zaporizhia and Robotine, Maripol, Donetsk, Luhansk. Okay, so these are some important areas which are under control of Russia now. And you can move on to this news page. And most of the articles are political articles. We are not going to bother about them at all. Yeah, 
is here you can see one interesting fact that is urgent need there is urgent need to control use of e-cigarettes there is urgent need to control use of e-cigarettes says WHO so what is this WHO that is World Health Organization so now World Health Organization said that we have to control e-cigarettes so if you're talking about cigarette smoking that is nothing but tobacco consumption so because of tobacco consumption either through smoke or directly chewing that will cause us cancer so cancer is one of the important disease which is contributing for the death in all over the world but even very high in India so how many of you are from AP so if you see you are from AP your interview questions will be like based on tobacco cultivation in AP okay please be prepared with that and one more important thing here is because of this tobacco consumption you can see lung cancer throat cancer etc and it's one of the leading cause because even men and women they have habit of chewing tobacco and smoking of tobacco etc so now what happened we came up with this concept of e-cigarettes okay so e-cigarettes rather than using directly cigarettes we are coming up with this concept of e-cigarettes so e-cigarettes as consumer products are not shown to be effective for quitting tobacco use at the population level so actually when we came up with this e-cigarettes we thought that by using this e-cigarettes that will cause us rehabilitation so people will be forgetting this using of tobacco but this recent study says that e-cigarettes with nicotine are highly addictive and even they are harmful to health that can lead to cigarette use okay so instead alarming evidence has been emerged on adverse population health effects here who said about we have to ban this and we have to urgently take some controlling steps for this e-cigarette to protect children as well as non-smokers and as well as minimize health harm to the population so this e-cigarette is very very dangerous so because of this we have to control or we have to take urgent steps to control this e-cigarette and we have to protect the children non-smokers and we have to minimize the health harms to the population okay so this is the thing that mainly said and even actually so this paragraph is important world organization noted that e-cigarettes with nicotine are highly addictive and they are harmful to the health while long-term health effects are not fully understood it has been established that they generate toxic substances okay so because of this toxic substances they even known to cause cancer okay they even known to cause cancer and there is also increased risk of heart and lung disorder so not only the heart and lung disorder but even it will be having impact on brain development so here it will also affect brain development and that will lead to the brain disorders in young population okay so these are the some important things and even uh, whenever you are pregnant whenever you are having the habit of uh, smoking either uh, directly with cigarettes or this e-cigarettes then that will be having impact on the fetus okay fetal development abnormalities will be happen even with the use of this e-cigarettes okay so that is the thing which mainly said and if you move on you can go to this world page there is nothing much important and this business page you can see these articles so wholesale price rose in November after seven month lull so actually what happened after seven successive months of deflation now again this uh, there is rise of wholesale prices okay so wholesale prices has been increased so because of less production so less uh, supply of pulses and uh, whenever there is high demand in the market that will lead to increasing of price of pulses and even 10 percentage rise in vegetables and paddy prices okay so this is the thing which mainly said here and here you have to know what is this WPI index and number of times we discussed about this WPI index in our class so please do revise and next topic is India's net direct tax receipts rises by 23.4 percentage so if you're talking about taxes so there are two types of taxes that is direct tax and indirect tax so this article is talking about direct tax direct tax it is a progressive tax 
direct tax it is a progressive tax and if you see the examples here we have income tax corporate tax gift tax etc so these are some important examples of this direct tax okay so that that are the things that you have to remember and these are the important topics that appear in our today's hindu newspaper now we are going to see the notes part so if you want to get the notes of this class you can join the telegram channel link is given in description box and one more thing here is prelims booster course is going on so admissions are going on so please contact us on this number 8074765513 so the number is given in description box so that you can take admission for this prelims booster course okay now let us see the notes so this are today's notes of this hindu the first article it is about terror charges terror charges invoked in security breach case so this article is important from your gs paper to under polity and gs paper 3 under internal security so now let us see this topic in detail and you have to focus on uapa and in last class also we discussed about that uapa so if you see context it says that a day after a major security breach a day after a major security breach in lok sabha delhi police invoked sections of unlawful activities prevention act so this unlawful activities prevention act it is an anti terror law okay so the people there are around 6 people they accused but out of them the four one the four people they had been caught and against them there is anti terror law which has been imposed and they have also been charged under sections of ipc related to crime conspiracy trespass provoking right and obstructing a public servant in the discharge of functions so this article says that so because of this uh, security breach so those so accused people they have been accused under unlawful act of prevention act and as well as under this ipc so next topic here it is about joint parliamentary committee on security in parliamentary complex so in parliamentary complex so here parliament need to take care of its security issues right so for that we are having this joint parliamentary uh, parliamentary committee on security in lok sabha or in parliamentary complex so this parliamentary committee which is focusing on security in parliament complex okay so this is responsible for overseeing this is responsible for overseeing and reviewing the security arrangements within the parliament complex so within the parliament complex it is a security of this committee to need to oversee and to need to review the security in this entire complex so that this committee which plays a very important role in ensuring safety so it will ensure safety and security of the members of parliament parliamentary staff and overall functioning of the parliament so who are the members which are included in this committee so if you see the committee compositions we have the members from both lok sabha and as well as rajya sabha so we have the members from both lok sabha and as well as rajya sabha so which will reflect the bipartisan approach of security oversight and this one is policy recommendations so committee will make recommendations for formulation of security policies and even it will be providing the guidelines within the parliament complex so these are the some important recommendations of this committee and it also includes issues related to access to control surveillance emergency response coordination with relevant security agencies so all these are issues which are also addressed like access control surveillance emergency response coordination so all these things will be included and the joint committee has headed by the speaker of lok sabha so this committee has been headed by the speaker of lok sabha so these are some important things that you have to know because whenever you are writing an answer for the security breach so you have to know like yes there is a joint a committee which is focusing on this security of parliament and next topic is 14 opposition mps suspended from house amid face off so this topic is purely based on your polity so if you see context it says that there is escalating the face off with opposition parties 
they have been demanding a statement from home minister over the security breach in lok sabha okay because of this around 14 opposition mps they were suspended okay they were suspended for the remaining days of winter session for disrupting parliamentary proceedings so now in the parliament here winter session is going on so in this winter session so these 14 mps they had been suspended for entire winter session so if you see details it says that what is the general principle so the general principle is that the role and duty of the presiding officer that is for example speaker in a lok sabha and chairman in rajya sabha it is to maintain order so the primary responsibility is maintain to order such that so that here house can function smoothly so if the house they need to work smoothly or to go smoothly so there is a lot of role that to be played by a presiding officer okay so it, it is a responsibility of speaker in lok sabha and chairman of rajya sabha regarding the maintenance of or providing the uh, security and next one is to ensure that proceedings are conducted in the proper manner speaker chairman is empowered to force a member to withdraw from the house so even the power which is given to the speaker and chairman to remove the member or to withdraw the member from the house to maintain security and peace in this parliament and next one here is the types of suspicion so here if you're talking about these people they had been suspended right so how many days so the maximum period of suspension is for the remainder of the session so that is the thing which is mainly seen in this uh, article and they will be suspended cannot enter the chamber or attend the meetings of the committees and he will be also not eligible to give notice for discussions or submissions and he when he loses the right to get a reply to his questions okay so these are the terms of suspicions where the members of parliament can be suspended by the house so next one is rule 3074a so there is one rule which talks about uh, about this suspension so that is rule 374a it was incorporated in the rule book in december 2001 so it says that if there is any any case of violation or severe charges on being enabled by the speaker, so the member stands automatically suspended from the service of the house. And for five consecutive settings and or for the remaining remainder session, whichever is less. So in this way, even rule 374A talks that if they are doing wrong, so they have to go for they have to go okay so they have to be suspended and next topic is india's fastest solar electric boat launcher so this article is important from your science and technology which comes in a three uh, paper three so i was very very happy after seeing this because we are moving towards transition of our renewable energy towards renewable energy so if you see the context it says that taking ahead of cause of eco-friendly maritime transportation so Barakuda said to be India's fastest solar electric boat which was launched. So now let us see here details. It says that the name of this ship it is Swift. Okay, it is nothing but a long fish. So Barakuda was designed by naval and that can be deployed even in a rough season as well as a work boat. Because that can be used as a work boat. To ferry up about 12 passengers okay so they can carry 12 passengers so the capacity here is 12 12 passengers or they can also carry directly the cargo so if you're talking about details of this uh, shape here 14 it is 14 meter long and 4.4 meter wide vessel and it can attain a top speed of 12.5 knots that is around 23 kilometers per hour and has a range of 7 hours in a single charge and has driven 50 kilowatts of electricity motors and marine grade LPF battery and 6 kb solar power. So all these things are, they are mounted in this boat. And even this boat is engineered to navigate through waves as tall as 4 meters and operates without noise, vibration as well as air pollution. So here this will be very much helpful to the navigate through the waves 
and even it is around uh, uh, it is having 4 meters uh, and as well as it will be operating without noise so without noise means it is causing no air pollution even it will also co not causing any air pollution as well as noise pollution so even this boat which won the uh, world's best startup award in mobility and transportation category so the name of that award is Berling Startup Energy Transition Awards and the firm that operates from Kochi has also received the various prestigious awards including this Gustave Trow awards twice. So all these things they had been written regarding this boat. And now let us see next topic it is about COP28. So it is about COP28. So please let me know what are the points that you know about this COP28 fast. So please pause the video and write the important points regarding this COP28. So I need at least uh, 5 important points. Are you doing? Are you typing? So this type of exercise is very very important because that will help you to recall the things that is present in your brain. So this article is talking about phasing out of fossil fuels. So recently in this COP28 which had been concluded, so it came up with a draft climate deal. Okay, it said that we have to go for phasing out of fossil fuels. So if you see details, it says that there is a need to bring parity between coal, oil and gas. So these are the fossil fuels and need to do away with them and to keep temperature increased below 1.5 degrees centigrade by the end of the century. So by end of the century, so we have to control this climate change at least 1.5 degrees centigrade. Okay, so we have to decrease that much. Okay, so this is the thing which mainly said. And even it called, called for reduce uh, both consumption and production of fossil fuels. So regarding this fossil fuels also they are focusing that we have to reduce the consumption and even reduce the production of this fossil fuels. And actually we need to focus on orderly and equitable manner okay, of emission so that we can achieve this net zero. And next one is burning fossil fuels for example coal, oil and natural gas. That will release this carbon dioxide into atmosphere and as well as uh, this carbon dioxide is a major, major cause of concern because it is a greenhouse gas. And that will contribute to this further global warming. And industrial activities, transportation, deforestation, they contribute to this greenhouse gas emissions. And next one is burning of fossil fuel which contributes nearly 80% of the greenhouse gas emissions of which coal makes up to 40 percentage and oil and as well as gas they are collectively constituting the rest. So we are talking about what are the energy that we are using so most of the energy that is developed by using coal that is called as thermal energy. So rather than that whatever the other sources that we are using they are very very less. So this is the cause of concern. And next one is, is India doing enough to tackle this climate change or not? Here you have to focus on what are the steps taken by our country to control this climate change. So if you see the context, it says that in a historic first, around 198 signatories to this United Nations Conference on Parties COP28 adopted an agreement Agreement is nothing but transition away from all fossil fuels. Okay, so like coal and as well as crude oil and natural gas. So India played a pivotal role in Glasgow in modifying language from facing out of coal to facing it down. That means we are decreasing the use of this coal. So what are the effects uh, which are taken by our country to come up with the climate change? So if you want, you can make a note of these points because you can directly write them in your answer. So you can get a question like what are the steps taken by our government of India to control this climate change. So in this way also directly you can get a question. So to answer that, yes this content is very very important. So first one here is government of India came up with this long term 
लो कार्बन डेवलपमेंट स्ट्राटजी दैट इज एल टी एल इज ओके सो नवंबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू इंडिया सबमिटेड इट्स एल टी एल इज एट दुनाइटेड नेशन कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑफ पार्टी ट्वेंटी सेवन इन इजिप्ट दैट इज इन शाम एल शेख सो इट इज इंडिया लॉन्ग टर्म स्ट्राटी एंड वी सेट दैट वी आर गोइंग टू अचीव दिस कार्बन न्यूट्रलिटी और नेट जीरो सो इवन रिजल्ट इन सेवन की ट्रांजिशन टू लो कार्बन डेवलपमेंट पाथवेज सो विच आर दो सेवन कीज सो फर्स्ट वन इज लो कार्बन डेवलपमेंट ऑफ एलेक्ट्रिसिटी सिस्टम सो देर इज वेरी लो कार्बन डेवलपमेंट एंड इस वन इज देर इज इंटीग्रेटेड एफिशियंट इंक्लूसिव लो कार्बन ट्रांसपोर्ट सिस्टम एंड इवन वी कैन प्रमोट एडाप्टेशन अर्बन डिजाइन एंड सस्टेनेबल अर्बनाइजेशन सो इन दिस कॉन्टेक्स ऑल्सो दे आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड वी कैन फोकस ऑन लो कार्बन इंडस्ट्रियल सिस्टम्स सो विद दैट ऑल्सो वी कैन डिक्रीज एमिशंस and carbon dioxide removal and related engineering solutions and this one is enhancing of forest and vegetation cover so these are some important things that we have to focus and next one is india also came up with updating of this inds that is intended national determined contributions so what are they so in august 2022 india updated its ndcs okay so when in 2022 So, forty-five percentage of reduction emission intensity, and we also said that about fifty percentage of share of renewables in electricity generation, like we can use solar energy and as well as wind energy, tidal energy, etc. And this one is creation of two point five to three billion tons of additional carbon sink through forest. So we are also going to increase the forest cover. So first one is emission, second one is renewables, and third one is forest cover. And next one is recently our government of India came up with this Mission Life. So Mission Life it is an India-led global mass movement. So in this movement we are focusing on nudging individual and collective action to protect and to preserve environment. So we are focusing on protecting and preserving of environment. And next one is if you are talking about objectives of this life, it is nothing but to mobilize at least one billion Indians. and other global citizens to take individual and collective actions for protecting and preserving the environment and within india at least 80% of villages and urban local bodies they need to become environment friendly by 2028 okay so these are two very important targets and this one is government also came up with this national action plan on climate change so as it was old one it is not a new one so we came up in 2008 and it includes five important sorry eight important missions first one is national solar mission so we have to come up with national mission for enhanced energy efficiency and we need to come up with so sustainable ta- habitat and next one is national water mission the so national mission for sustaining the himalayan ecosystem and it also said for national mission for a green india and national mission for sustainable agriculture and it's also focusing on national mission on strategic knowledge for climate change so these are the eight important things which are the missions which are need to address the challenges of climate change so this is about this topic and these are some initiatives which are came by the government of india to control this climate change so next topic is is russia winning the ukraine war or not So this article is very important, and it is important from your international relations as usual, which comes in a GS paper too. So if we are talking about context, it says that it has been six months since Ukraine launched its much anticipated counteroffensive with advanced weapons and training provided by the West. So actually, Russia-Ukraine issue it started in February last year. It is around almost. a uh, long time right so actually here what happened ukraine is a very small country and russia is a very big country and russia is also developed more and is having lot of uh, army and as well as lot of uh, equipment defense equipment but it is not with the ukraine so because of this eastern european country which has failed to make a major breakthrough in the battlefield and is now scrambling for more military assistance now it is saying that yes if you want to fight with russia so we need more military assistance from the other countries so in this context here president 
he was in uh, washington earlier this week and they said that we need to have some defense ties so we need to have some funds so we need to have some finances okay but here on another side russia is a very big and mighty power so it is keeping its defensive lines that cut across southern and eastern ukraine okay so here on another side here russia is like an elephant so it is having the good technology good uh, funding etc so because of this what happened russia is keeping all its defense lines and if you see some more important details which are given in this article which says that as ukraine's counter offensive flattered the support it enjoyed it in the west especially us came under growing pressure now so us initially started uh, started helping this ukraine but now what happened so whenever they are helping a lot here so there is growing of pressure on this us is also seen and even there are some reports which says that american media okay that the us and european union us and european union they are now encouraging to give to start talks with russians they want to come up with a peace deal or agreement between ukraine as well as russia and next one is in his annual press conference which held on thursday so russian president said that if we want to come with a peace with ukraine that will happen but it will be happen only after achieving our objectives so here ukraine should not join nato right so that is the one important and primary reason why this issue between this russia and ukraine had been started so these are some important topics that appeared in our today's hindu newspaper so that's all for today i hope you enjoyed this class if you really like this class please hit the like button and don't forget to share this video and even please do subscribe to rathor's is academy youtube channel thank you so much for watching